Hello, welcome to RCC's Math Tape 077, Literal Equations. Literal equations are equations that have more than one letter in them. We're going to be solving literal equations using the techniques for solving linear equations of the usual type. If you have forgotten how to solve linear equations completely and need to review, you can use Math Tape 073 for reviewing solving linear equations. While we go through the tape, you should take careful notes, be sure they're accurate. On any places that you don't understand, you should mark your notes so that you can ask for help when you go to the lab. The lab instructors and the tutors will be happy to work with you. Now let's begin. The objective on this tape is to solve a literal equation for one of the variables. Solve a literal equation for one of the variables. Since a literal equation has more than one letter in it, it has more than one variable. So we'll be getting one of the variables alone. Our goal is rewrite the equation or formula so that the designated variable is alone on one side of the equation and all other numbers and variables are on the other side. Rewrite the equation or formula so that the designated variable is alone on one side of the equation and all other numbers and variables are on the other side. rewrite the equation or formula. Sometimes we'll be looking at an equation that has no particular meaning for us. Frequently, however, the literal equation is a formula. Maybe a formula from business, a formula from chemistry, a formula used by machinists, a formula used by nurses. A formula which has more than one letter in it. So that the designated variable, you will be told at the outset which variable is designated to be found by itself. The designated variable is alone on one side of the equation. We typically get a letter, a variable, alone on one side of the equation. What we've been working with up to this point, however, has involved only a single letter, and so we would get that variable alone on one side of the equation. This is very similar and all other numbers and variables are on the other side. All other expressions of any type are on the other side. What we have ended up with as our solutions up to this point have been equations of the form variable equals constant. This time, since there's more than one variable, we will end up with variable equals expression, and that expression will be something involving numbers and variables. I have a suggestion for you, something that may help you to keep things straight. The suggestion is to make believe. Pretend that the only variable is the designated variable. Pretend that the only variable is the designated variable and all other symbols are numbers. Pretend that everything in the problem is a number except for the letter that you're designated to get by itself. Pretend that the only variable is the designated variable and all other symbols are numbers. Now let's look at examples. We'll start with Solve 5x plus 3y equals 6 for y. Solve 5x plus 3y equals 6 for y. The designated variable is y. And so we will pretend that y is the only variable in the problem. y is the only variable in the problem. Notice that y has a coefficient of 3, which we will ultimately divide by. 
the y term also has an extra term on the same side of the equation with it. So we must remove the 5x from the left-hand side of the equation. To remove 5x, we add its opposite. Opposite of 5x is negative 5x, and so we'll add negative 5x to both sides of this equation. This gives us 5x plus 3y plus negative 5x equals 6 plus negative 5x. The 5x is canceled, leaving us with 3y on the left, and that gives us 3y is equal to 6 plus negative 5x. The designated letter is y. y is almost by itself. All we must do is divide by its coefficient, which is 3. And so we divide both sides of this equation by 3. On the left, the 3 is cancelled, leaving us with y. On the right, we can write simply 6 add negative 5x over 3. Now, if you stop here, the equation has been solved. We have solved this equation for y. y is alone on one side of the equation, and so we have 6 plus negative 5x over 3 as the answer. That will do. However, it is not the preferred form. We want to simplify this answer a bit. So let's tackle that problem. What we can do is decompose the fraction. This may be a new concept. Decompose the fraction. Our fraction has more than one term in the numerator, a single term in the denominator. We can decompose the fraction by writing each numerator term over the denominator. And so we'd write y is equal to 6 over 3 plus negative 5x over 3. We simply split it apart into two terms. Now you can check this idea by doing what you usually do, and that is adding the fractions. Notice these fractions have a common denominator. If we were to add these two fractions, we would simply keep the denominator 3 and add the numerators, add 6 plus negative 5x. That would get us back to what we had to begin with. So instead of adding the fractions to get back to a single fraction, we're taking the single fraction apart, and we call this decomposing the fraction. Now, in the first fraction, 6 over 3 can be reduced to 2. And so we write y is equal to 2 plus negative 5x over 3 cannot be reduced, and so it remains as it is. Here's another version that can be left as the answer. However, our preference when we're writing an expression that has a constant and a variable term is to leave the constant at the end. And so, our preferred form, the best form, is y is equal to negative 5 thirds x, or negative 5x over 3, add 2. And so this is the form that we will keep as our final result. y is equal to negative 5x over 3, add 2. Now we have on this screen four different versions of the answer. If you were to stop at the first version, that would be correct. If you were to stop at the second version, that would be fair, but we never leave 6 over 3. If you stop at the third version, that is correct. The last version is by far the best choice. And the reason for this is that it's in the simplified form. We have fraction only where required. The constant is written at the end. And the form that we're looking at is a form that you will see soon in a later section of our work.